Hello everybody, good morning. And the boys are in the pool, but I got dressed. I mean, I'm wearing leggings. Like I could easily just take this off and put on a suit, but nah. Um, however, we did get this in the mail, which is a water car. I don't really understand it. I hope it doesn't need batteries. I'm sure it does. But apparently this thing rides on the water. And Flynn's been obsessed with the pool lately, so I was like, he loves cars and he loves the water. Is there anything that can combine those two? And I found something. I'm gonna try to see what this thing does. I found a screwdriver and batteries, however. My son typically is really scared of remote control cars. I'm just remembering. Le flesh beak. Do you like that? I don't know if he likes that. Pretty cool, huh, Flynn? Go get it, baby. He it is not like that. Maybe don't put the batteries in it. <laughs> End of flesh beak. Like anything that's like a really loud, like moves on its own type of car, he's not a fan of. So maybe for right now, we'll just play with it as is. And then we'll try, cause I don't want to freak him out and make him one out of the pool. And then later we'll try it with remote control. What do you think? Yeah, it's a water car. It's time to make bread. I haven't made bread in days. I haven't made coffee in days. I have been very focused on, oh no, lots of other things, including Whoa. guts and blood on my bread box. Oh, okay, we're gonna make tri-tip for dinner finally. I tried to make it last week and I accidentally made a butt roast. I don't know, I'm a mess these days. So I made a little spice rub. Exactly. So I'm gonna rub this on my meats. And uh, then I'm going to put the bread in the oven. So that's the exciting stuff in my day, guys. This is a really, really yummy tri-tip recipe, by the way. So if you guys ever want a barbecue tri-tip, I'll tell it to you when we start actually grilling the tri-tip how to do it. It's really amazing, 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 amazing. Guys, I think this is the month. I think the month of May is the month where Gus kills us. <laughs> he is terrifying. You guys have been watching me for a while. You know, we have three pets. We have Moose, the sweetest dog in the world. Like, there's never been a dog sweeter than this dog. He's cuddly, gentle, calm. Like, he's just a beautiful, wonderful soul. We have Daisy, who's a beautiful, wonderful soul, but has no brain. Like, we always say that if she ever died and they, like, tried to figure out what happened to her, they'd open her up and find nothing inside. Like, no organs, no brains, nothing. Like, she's just a ball of nothing. She's very cuddly, but just real dumb. And then we have Gus. Gus was the first pet of this household, and he is a monster. So, <laughs> this is Gus. <laughs> And he's such a brat. So Gus has the funniest personality, I would say, of everyone in the house. Gus feels like it's his house and we are intruding. And he also feels like he has to supervise us. He's not the type of cat that like skitters and runs away every time a human is near and like is hiding under the couch and hiding under everything. He doesn't want to be around humans. He wants to be near us, but he doesn't want us to touch him and he has to supervise us at all times. So if we go outside, he's at the window watching us. If we're in a room, he's in the room three feet from us. He has to watch us eat dinner. He has to watch us do everything. He feels like he has to supervise us, but he hates us. And I think this is the month where he's had enough of the quarantine and he's like, these used to always be gone on tour, always be gone out of the house in meetings. They were never home and now they're here all the time in my house and he's over it. Last night he was running around like crazy. He just tried to trip me. Eric was like, I think he just tried to kill you. I think this is the month where Gus kills us. If I suddenly stop vlogging, you know who, who did it. It was him, I'm just saying. He is a brat, like he's a brat. He seems really, really angry today and I just, I'm scared for our safety. <laughs> do you want to do it? Ooh. <laughs> you like, crying or laughing? I don't know what it is. He's like laughing but hates it. I don't know. Do you like it, baby? Trash. I love this one. 
Ooh. We are gonna go write a letter to Grandma. I don't know if my mom watches my vlogs. I think she does, but I don't think she's like up to date with them, if that makes sense. And I think the same is for Grandma Nita, Eric's mom. I'm not sure that they'll see this before they get it. I don't know, but I thought it would be fun since we can't see them in person to write them a little letter. You can be pen pals with Grandma, what do you think? Okay. <laughs> okay. Dear Grandma, I love you. I miss you so much. Can you color on here? Oh, good boy. Good job. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Look at this beautiful masterpiece. Oh, he's an artist. We are at the park. Oh, where is he? Last time we were here, we saw a little gopher, badger, groundhog, I don't know what you would call it, in the dirt. And now, Flynn is just looking everywhere for it. He can't find it. Yeah, I know there's a hole right there, but there's nothing in it. Is it in there? Did you see it? He's just sitting here waiting and it's breaking my heart because I know it's not gonna come up. <laughs> Did you see it? Okay, that's fine. Okay. He's satisfied. Oh, do you think you found it over here? Airplane, yeah, airplane. Did you find it, Flynn? Where is it? He's looking everywhere for it. Did you find it? Where is it, Flynn? Look, I'm just trying to feed my son, and look, look who's lurking. Okay, baby's asleep, and I told you I would tell you about this recipe. So I found this on allrecipes.com, and I usually tweak recipes quite a bit, but this one I don't. So you just need a tri-tip roast. You put together like a bunch of different seasonings, salt, pepper, garlic powder, paprika, onion powder, rosemary, cayenne pepper, and that's what I rubbed on the meat earlier today. And now I'm making a, um, what do you call it? a marinade type of thing, but it's not marinating it, you brush it on it. So in this, I'm gonna put a third cup red wine vinegar, a third cup vegetable oil, four cloves of crushed garlic, and half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And then Eric's gonna grill it. The rub has been kind of marinating into the meat all day, but then when he cooks it, every four minutes, he flips the meat and brushes the juice that I'm about to make on it, and does it for 25 to 30 minutes. And I'm telling you, I mean, maybe it was a fluke, but the last time we did it, it was like one of the best pieces of meat I've ever eaten in my life. It could be because Eric and I completely stopped eating red meat for a very long time and then now during quarantine there are days where we have it, like today. And so since we don't really eat red meat anymore, maybe it just like seems more amazing. <laughs> red wine vinegar is strong. Anyway, it's really, really amazing. And so if you do eat red meat, this is a recipe I would recommend. And some uh, things are hard to get at the store these days, but I don't think a lot of people are eating tri-tips, so it's really, really yummy. So it's called Santa Santa Maria Grilled Tri-Tip Beef. It's on all recipes, it has five stars, and this is the picture of the meat. So if you find it on allrecipes.com, Santa Maria Grilled Tri-Tip, so good. Another fun thing, Eric is making a medical mask right now for himself. Um, something exciting we got today in the mail. This is something that's only exciting for a middle-aged human. Who's boring? It is a grill set. <laughs> Everyone's like, that is not exciting. It's exciting for us, okay. This is very exciting because all the tools that we have were not really grilling tools, so Eric was getting burnt out there because they weren't the right kind of tools. Ooh, this. <gasps> I'm so excited about this. Ooh, lovey, you're gonna be so excited. Oh my god, 
Okay, so one of the issues last time he made this tri-tip was that he kept getting burnt when he would try to glaze the sauce stuff on the meat because our only glaze thing is like this long. Look how long this is. He's not gonna get burnt tonight. This is everything. Okay, so we have an internal thermometer here. This is what we use, but on the grill, it's really, really hot. There are flames and whatnot. Look at this internal thermometer. It's so long. This is amazing. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm such a loser. We have tri-tip, carrots, and potatoes, and more potatoes, and biscuits. We're a little nervous maybe the meat went bad. Why is it gray? Yeah, uh-oh. Did the meat go bad? I don't know, it's like a little gray. I'm gonna have to goog this. Give it a goog. We looked it up, it said for red meat, as long as it's not ground meat, you can eat it after you've, after you've thawed it like five days later, three to five days later. Chicken and ground meat, you have to cook within a day or two. So we should be fine. We're just a little nervous, it looks a little funky. I have been talking of this meat all day and now it's like, uh-oh. Okay, so, the tri-tip was very good. <laughs> but I don't think it was. Would it be a vlog of mine if I didn't sneeze dramatically? You know what I mean? Um, anyway, I think it was the meat. We get sent meat from like local farms and like small companies and whatever. You never know what you're gonna get really. It's kind of like what they have available. And so last time we got tri-tip was a few weeks ago and it was like and this time just wasn't good. The meat wasn't good. I don't, because we prepared it the same exact way. However, I still stand by that recipe. The flavors were still good. Anyway, still recommend the recipe I boringly told you earlier today. Um, but I thought, oh no. Get out. Get out. She's stuck. Anyway, I thought I would end today's video by playing you guys some songs that I've written for Flynn because I sing songs to him every night when he goes to sleep and I've sung these to you before when he was really little. I've really enjoyed coming into my office and playing my ukulele at night. I think music is helpful for me to just like be happy and feel calm and so I've enjoyed playing music and tonight I was singing my songs to Flynn to fall asleep and I was like oh I should sing these for them. Although I've never played them with ukulele so I should probably learn the chords. I always just sing them acapella. Hmm, that's an issue. I'm gonna figure out the chords. I'll be right back. So this is a song that I wrote when Flynn was a very tiny little baby and I sing it to him every single time I put him to sleep. Every single time. And I just figured out chords that kind of go with it but usually I sing it to him, always sing it to him acapella and really quiet and slow but I just like am figuring out chords so this probably won't sound good, but here we go. Time to go to sleep, baby Flynn. We can have adventures again tomorrow. Time to go to sleep, baby Flynn. I can't wait to see you again in the morning. We can have some cuddles and kisses all day long. We'll be laughing and dancing and singing this song. So go to sleep, baby Flynn. So that's something I sing to him all the time. Another song we sing to him all the time is one about um, calming down. This one we made up when he had colic. I wrote the song when he was just a colicky little baby and crying all the time. And now we sing it to him. He's a pretty happy boy 24 seven, but every once in a while he'll you know, get hurt or just be tired and grumpy and we'll sing this song to calm him down. Time to calm down, 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 down. Time to calm down, baby, don't you frown. Time to calm down, 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 down. Time to calm down, baby, don't you frown. Take a deep breath and close your eyes. Take a deep breath and blow your travels to the skies. It's time to calm down. Those are the two main songs we sing to Flynn all the time. Uh, another song that I wrote for Flynn, I wrote before he was born, and I don't think I'm gonna remember the chords, but I wrote it when I was pregnant. I was just thinking about the song tonight, and I haven't really sung it, I don't think, since I had him, but I was miserable, and the only thing that made me happy when I was pregnant was thinking about meeting Flynn. So I wrote the song. Hey, sweet boy, I love you. 
There's one more song we wrote tonight. We're always writing dumb songs for Flynn, but tonight we started a new song that was like, Bouncy, bouncy Flynn is coming down. Bouncy, bouncy Flynn and we all fall down. And we, he was just like, <sighs> and then he would fall. And that's why we started singing that. And he loved it. He would dance like this and then fall down over and over again. It was very cute. I don't know why I just showed you guys that stuff, but I love you. And I hope you're having a wonderful May so far. Apparently they're gonna lighten the lockdown load this month at some point which seems terrifying because the covid cases are not going down i don't know why they want to do that but um i trust the health professionals and if they say it's okay to start doing excuse me i just like almost threw up i need to go to bed i'm just all i care about is that there might be a possibility that i'm hugging my parents this month and that's all i want in the world is to hug my parents fingers crossed we might be seeing my parents this month guys i'll see you tomorrow before I end this video, I just want to clarify that yes, I want to see my parents, but more importantly, I want to keep my parents and everyone safe and healthy. So I'm happy to stay in lockdown and not see my parents for as long as I need to, to keep everyone safe. I will only see them if the medical healthcare professionals uh, advise that it is okay to see like loved ones or small groups or whatever. I'm not that was not me advocating for them to open up the country again or like, no, I want everyone to stay healthy. I just want to clarify. That's what I meant. Anyway, okay, just want to clarify. Goodbye.